Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know, like subscribe, and share to help support the channel. First article of interest for today. Retirement Board. The Ministry of Finance is delaying the payment of pensioners' salaries for unknown reasons. DCAR's retirement manager, Ahmed Al Zaidi, revealed on Tuesday the reasons for delaying the payment of pensioners' salaries in all regions of Iraq, blaming the Ministry of Finance for this matter. Al Zaidi told Alma Aluma that the delay in the payment of pensioners' salaries for the current month of May is due to internal reasons at the Ministry of Finance. He added, the Ministry of Finance did not specify for a moment the date of dispersing the salaries of retirees throughout the country, despite the passage of five days from its original date for disbursement. Sources reported that the delay in the payment of salaries may have been caused by the retirement of the Ministry of Finance formally from retirees, but the National Retirement Authority implemented any deductions. Next article of interest. Sumazem to El Masala? Reducing the value of the Iraqi dinar reduces the per capita income of Iraq in half. Economist Salam Semsem said on Tuesday, 5 May 2020 that the government will not be able to manipulate salaries, and it is constitutionally and legally obliged to provide the salaries of its employees and workers in its sectors. Semsem said, in an interview with Al Masala, that cutting salaries or deducting them will lead to the wrath of the Iraqi street which will not be silenced by cutting its livelihoods today, so the Iraqi government will resort to another option to bridge the financial deficit. She added that the government will resort to a ploy, which economists know, which is to reduce the value of the Iraqi dinar, and when the value is reduced, the per capita income will be halved, so an employee who has a salary of 600,000 diners will actually receive 300,000 making him unable to secure his life requirements. The Iraqi Deputy Prime Minister for Energy, Thamer al Gadbin, said that the total Iraqi revenues from selling oil amounted to $87 billion in 2019, at a price of $61 per barrel. After the big drop in oil prices, and the reduction of production by 1 million barrels per day, and after the recent agreement with OPEC, the total amount that will enter the budget due to the sale of oil will be only about $40 billion, from which the revenues of the oil companies will be deducted. The Parliamentary Finance Committee indicated that the Iraqi government will not be able to borrow from foreign banks, because it has debts that must be paid first before resorting to borrowing, pointing out that resorting to the stockpile in the Central Bank of Iraq will create a legal crisis with the World Bank and that local banks and companies cannot deal with a bankrupt government. It indicated that the government can resort to issuing treasury bonds and selling them to citizens as happened in 2016, or selling land to merchants, and resorting to printing the currency locally. Next article of interest. Trump, oil prices are rising well. U.S. President Donald Trump on Tuesday considered the good oil price to continue to rise in global markets. Oil prices are rising well as demand returns again, Trump said in a tweet on Twitter today. Oil prices jumped again on Tuesday, thanks to hopes for a recovery in demand for fuel, as some U.S. states, European and Asian countries began easing general isolation measures imposed to contain the spread of the emerging coronavirus. Next article of interest. Donald Trump and the Fed could be about to destroy the U.S. banking system. Donald Trump and the Federal Reserve have gone to extraordinary lengths to prop up the U.S. economy in recent weeks. The coronavirus pandemic and the lockdowns put in place to slow its spread have ravaged the U.S. economy, with the Fed and the Trump administration pumping a staggering $6 trillion into the system since March and taking interest rates back to record lows to keep it on its feet. Now, as the economic reality of a post-coronavirus world sinks in, President Trump and the Fed are edging closer to negative interest rates, something legendary investor Warren Buffett has warned could have extreme consequences. Negative interest rates, meaning borrowers are paid to take out loans by the lender, have been adopted by a number of central banks around the world, led by some European central banks and the Bank of Japan. 
If a central bank sets its overnight deposit rate to below zero, lenders must pay their central bank to hold their reserves. Banks could then pass those costs on to their customers, charging fees for positive balances. Some economists believe negative interest rates can jolt life into flatlining economies, encouraging money to be invested or spent, though others fear a negative interest rate policy could keep an economy subdued. We're doing things that we don't know. Their ultimate outcome, Buffett said when asked about the possibility of negative interest rates in the U.S. at Berkshire Hathaway's annual meeting on Saturday. Negative interest rates are probably the most interesting question that I've seen in economics, Buffett said, speaking to shareholders via webcast and warning of extreme consequences if a negative interest rate policy is brought in. Back in March, Buffett said the puzzle of what negative interest rates would do to U.S. financial markets is the most important question in the world, admitting he doesn't know the answer. Earlier this year, Trump indicated he'd be in favor of the Fed adopting negative interest rates in order to compete with countries that already have. We're forced to compete with nations that are getting negative rates, something very new, Trump told attendees at the World Economic Forum in January. Meaning, they get paid to borrow money, something I could get used to very quickly. While Fed Chair Jerome Powell has said he doesn't think negative interest rates are an appropriate policy, Trump isn't shy about applying pressure. The Federal Reserve should get our interest rates down to zero, or less, Trump tweeted in September. It is only the naivete of Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve that doesn't allow us to do what other countries are already doing. Trump said, calling Fed policymakers boneheads. Meanwhile, Narayana Cocker Lakota, a former president of the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis, has thrown his weight behind negative interest rates, calling for the Fed to set interest rates a quarter percentage point below zero and put employment above bank stability. Put crudely, the Fed is giving up on unemployment reductions to help keep banks and their shareholders safer. Cocker Lakota wrote in a Bloomberg op-ed. The Fed opted to keep interest rates on hold at its latest policy meeting last week, though Powell said he is willing to go further to prop up the economy ravaged by lockdowns. It may well be the case that the economy needs more support, Powell said, speaking at a press conference after the Fed's today policy meeting, leaving negative interest rates on the table but keeping them at arm's length for now. One of the things, the Fed, wants to do is protect the banking system, William Lee, chief economist at the California-based economic think tank Milken Institute, told CNBC this weekend. We've learned our lesson from Japan and the Europeans. When you go to negative rates you start impairing the banking system. I think, negative interest rates, will be the last tool the Fed pulls out of its toolkit. The Fed right now is oriented toward ensuring financial markets work and work properly and stay working. Last month, a senior official at the International Monetary Fund warned the Bank of Japan against pushing rates deeper into negative territory, cautioning it would provide fairly limited economic stimulus while negative rates may weaken profitability in parts of the financial sector. Coronavirus-induced lockdowns have caused central bankers and policymakers to go further and move faster than ever before, pushing some toward alternatives, such as Bitcoin, a cryptocurrency. Many Bitcoin and cryptocurrency exchanges around the world have reported a surge in users and trading volumes over the last couple of months. Talk of negative interest rates in the U.S. come as Bitcoin is on the verge of its third supply squeeze, something many crypto proponents think is likely to boost the Bitcoin price. The world economy just experienced a crisis that highlighted the risk of insufficient cash balances, and now policymakers want to further penalize cash balances with the use of negative interest rates. Why? to try to create a short-term increase in spending and investing ahead of the November election, said Pierre Rashad, Bitcoin strategist at Bitcoin and crypto exchange Kraken. Bitcoin has the opposite approach of incentivizing long-term savings with seizure resistance and volatile hyperinflation. Bitcoin's looming supply squeeze, called a halving, is set for May 12th and will see the number of Bitcoin rewarded to those that maintain the Bitcoin network.
known as miners, halved. The halvening is an important event for Bitcoin, but it's just one element in the perfect storm that Bitcoin is enjoying at the moment, said Alex Mashinsky, chief executive of cryptocurrency lending platform Celsius Network. Governments around the world are implementing unprecedented fiscal stimulus, which risks causing high inflation across fiat currencies, which reinforces Bitcoin's value proposition as a deflationary asset. As a result, many first-time retail investors are flocking to Bitcoin as a way to protect their wealth. The Oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett, whose previously branded Bitcoin, probably Rat Poison Squared, told Berkshire Hathaway shareholders the coronavirus pandemic could have an extraordinarily wide range of possible outcomes. A severely weakened U.S. banking system potentially leading to a Bitcoin and cryptocurrency adoption spike is one coronavirus outcome that even Buffett might have missed. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. Check out the Denarian blog. Facebook and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well. The links to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.